Welcome to another episode of In the Line of Wire. I have with me today Mr. Fahad Bangash, who is the CEO of Amana. Hi, Fahad. Good Welcome morning. to In the Line of Wire. Pleasure to be here. Sorry to drag you out so early in the morning. It's but not very early for me. <laughs> <laughs> it's early for you. No, no, I'm up at six, so I'm okay. an early riser. And that makes the two of us. <laughs> you know, um, I just couldn't miss the opportunity of having you in Karachi and not asking you to come down to the CIO web studio and talk to you about what is Amana up to? What Amana is up to is uh, up to very big things. Okay, so great. we are a small company, have been a small company, uh, very Silicon Valley-ish actually because that's where I have mostly been for the last 12 years and that's where we were when we first started out. And uh, we are in the company of giants. So what we are doing in Pakistan is figuring out how 90% of this country is going to somehow start doing electronic slash mobile payments. Okay. Now, what you have in this country as of last year, something called the Brandless Banking Framework, right. in which you can now go to a shop that could be an agent of a bank and where you could do simple banking transactions like put money into your Amana, take money out of your Amana, okay. and of course, pay for things in a POS sort of fashion. Right. Um, now, the thing about Pakistan with regards to the unbanked opportunity is, um, is it is at a world level. So we are, I think, the fifth worst country when it comes to banking penetration. Well, at the mobile commerce event yesterday, I think somebody said, I think it was the MCP president who said there are only 28 million bank accounts. Yeah, and that would basically translate to roughly, say, about 10 million people. Okay, yeah, because some of the, us have more than one account. In the banking account. system. Right. Now, that's 150 million people outside the banking system. Right. Uh, and now, at the same time, you have very good penetration of mobile phones. Right. And then million. in this country, we've also done a fantastic job with digitized identity cards. Right. Right. So, you have at least 50 million human beings in this country that, have, that are actively using a cell phone that have a digitized um, ID card, uh, which means you can verify them. Um, which also means, if nothing else, they're at least paying for their airtime every month. Why do you think that they need this service? I mean, they've done without it all these years. People want to know, yeah. why are you bringing this service to them? Why do they need it? Yes, cash is king. Um, but uh, it is also uh, a big liability. Uh, one doesn't really think about this, but the central bank or the state bank here probably spends billions of rupees every year just circulating currency. Right. You know? And then what also happens is that, I mean, roughly speaking, people think that the undocumented or the black economy in this country is about four times the documented economy. Wow. So at the national level, at the policy level, um, at the industry level, there is just a lot of interest um, and actually aggressive interest in bringing all of this onto the grid. Okay. And when you do that, your economy starts looking better. Now, at the same time, it's not like people don't want it. I mean, if you give a better way to either store their money or to transact their money to the average consumer, um, it's not like they, w they don't want it, it's just that they actually haven't seen it yet. So the need is definitely there. However, it is going to take a long amount of time. Uh, I mean, we've been at this for about five years. Um, yes. We could be at this for another five years before we're large enough so that uh, to the extent that people know us um, left, right and center. But uh, that's fine. It, it's a very large country. And, you know, I was actually also going to say that because of this massive um, opportunity, which is not just Pakistan-centric, I mean, most of your world, your, the bottom half of your world, if you will, more than three billion people fall into this opportunity of the unbanked. And Pakistan maybe is the most exciting place for not just Amana in here, but for everyone at the world stage to come and work on this problem because of the size of the initial target market and also because the regulators here have been just incredibly aggressive. Okay, terrific. Like they are literally for a year now waiting for the industry to do something about it. They've That's done great. everything that they had to do to make it very, very easy for people like us 
to go out and just do this. Uh, that's great. That's different from what we normally great. hear about regulators. So then what happens is that, our, so we have a very good problem then, which means that we get very, very busy working in a market that is so new, but already so competitive. And banks by nature are very, very conservative. Telcos by nature are too aggressive. Um, you have to uh, work with them. Um, and find a balance. Sort you of. have to find the balance and you have to figure it out. Now, what the thing is, where our work comes in, is we are focused on the end consumer. Right. The end use case, the end usability of the thing. Um, and unfortunately, your large enterprises, companies here, don't really necessarily start with that. Um, so, but that's fine. Uh, it's going to take its time. But when it does happen, uh, I mean, people predict that the, the, uh, the unbanked space, obviously in terms of numbers, um, is way larger than what you have within the banking system. Uh, but once it's all uh, covered, it's all um, on the grid, it could potentially be larger than the existing financial system in the country. Okay, so tell me, you are going to work with the banks, with some of the banks? So right now in, in this country, if you were to go and offer any sort of financial service to an unbanked person, it has to be, um, a, it has to be done by a bank. Okay. 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 So what we become is, we become two things. We become the technology platform okay. uh, for this entire operation, the front end of it. Okay. You know, like Visa is this network and it's right. a front end for all the banks that are offering Visa products. Right. That's one thing. The other thing we also become is a network manager okay. of all these retailers. Right. Uh, many of whom will be agents for Brantless Banking, many of whom will be merchants for right. even just mobile sort of banking. Um, so we sort of uh, fill in those large gaps there. Uh, where the end consumer and the end retailer comes in. Okay, terrific. Now, when did this idea first come to you? Uh, well, actually, uh, my father-in-law at one point, I was actually uh, on my honeymoon back then, uh, was, was, was just uh, toying with the idea of a, um, of a cross-border payment service okay. um, uh, from the U.S. to Pakistan where people could... Uh, pay via PayPal from right. the US right. and the funds could just be, uh, the uh, funds would just end up at your doorstep the next day in Pakistan here and there are services that do that. Uh, so he was toying with the idea and then I just thought about it and I said this could be much larger. So really at that time, this would have been about six years ago, okay. um, I was in um, Silicon Valley working with Palm, the trio had sort of just launched, so on and so forth, and I was sort of ready to do my startup. And uh, my visions and passions and goals have always been very Pakistan-centric, uh, grew up here. And um, I looked at the country and I said, you know, what is uh, a consumer problem that technology could solve? Right. And at that time it was just, you know, e-commerce, just Actually, it's, it still hasn't happened here yet, but even back then, it definitely had not happened. Uh, you just can't buy stuff uh, online Maybe we'll easily bypass there. it and go on to mobile commerce. Mobile commerce, commerce now, that's <laughs> almost actually happened already. Uh, so anyway, what it comes down to is payments. Right. Payments are a problem. Um, everything, whether it's e-commerce or cash management or whatever, what have you, the supply chain just can't move beyond a certain point until the payment is, is, is cleared. Right. Um, so it was just as simple as that, figuring out the payment problem. Uh, and when we started five years ago, there, was only, there were only three, four million mobile phones in the country, right. um, where today they're north of 80, 90 million. Um, and at that time, actually, uh, it was much easier to, uh, it was much more tangible to think about the cross-border payments coming into the country. Um, remittances have been, will be, um, huge right. uh, for Pakistan especially um, um, but actually then what happened is that sort of two years into it the local uh, mobile phone market just exploded and actually uh, uh, we've sort of had our own sort of dot-com era of the banking sector in this country that right. just ended right. and so both 
financial <coughs> services and sort of mobile services have been on this great sort of boom for the last five years here. So then, I mean, it was just very sensible to focus on the local market. Right. Um, and then once we've created the local sort of installed base, it will be fairly easy, in my opinion, to pull the uh, cross-border payments in as well. Right. So this is the larger challenge. And to be very, very specific, the agent networks, creating them is the challenge. So, so, we, so we sort of started with payments five years ago. And the whole thing is around payments, but really most of our work is figuring out how the retailer is going to now become an agent of a market. And what has the response been from retailers? Have you got end users involved yet? What? Yeah, what's so the I mean, re I mean, so we had a platform ready um, two and a half years ago to go, and so we just um, launched a beta um, at that time uh, three years ago, and we came out with this first feature where anyone with any sort of uh, with any mobile connection could now buy or share any kind of airtime right. uh, which may happen in this country now elsewhere but at that time for sure it just was something very very new we also gave everyone uh, five rupees right uh, when they signed up and another five rupees if they had sent a payment to a friend and the payment signed up as a result, you got another five rupees. So, and this is something I saw PayPal do about 10 odd years ago. Um, and we just saw it as our sort of marketing budget. There was no other marketing. That Giving we money away. Ever wow. just, we just <laughs> gave the money away so it could be spent onto our own system. Right. <laughs> and so that really caught on. Uh, I mean, I don't, maybe in history where some way notice it as sort of, as the first sort of viral consumer uh, uh, tech service because it just started from a village somewhere in a town somewhere and then we went from zero to 250,000 users wow. just virally. Right. Um, these people bought about 3 million rupees worth of airtime uh, or say 2 million rupees worth of airtime in very, very small chunks, like 100 right. rupees. Right. This is just a lot of activity, millions of transactions and hundreds of thousands of users. And this is why no one even knew about us. Okay. Uh, but Amana is already a brand yes. in different corners of this country. Um, and uh, so I'd, that is something that we know that we've achieved that people don't know about. Um, so that, is, so that is, has been the biggest proof point is, I mean, we've seen semi-literate people register with Amana with their name spelt incorrectly. Right. But they know how to do transactions because we've made it so easy for them. That was my next question, that is it a concept that people who are not literate will understand? Because this is one of the things people always say, oh no, we cannot develop for that sector because they're not literate. But has that been a and problem? And that was actually, that segues into what I was going to say next, is the agent. So we know we haven't had the luxury of going around town and figuring out the agent. Right. Now we have done a very successful closed-ended pilot uh, in microfinance right. where there was an agent and microfinance borrowers uh, made their repayments to the institution at the agent instead of going to the bank down the street. Right. Uh, but not at the retailer level. We haven't gone out yet. So the agent actually is going to be very, very important for us. Um, uh, see, what's, what's happened also is that in the airtime situation, which, which, is, which doesn't really lend itself to our line of work, but what that has done is that it, people have come to understand how you can transact value right. um, over just simple USSD or SMS commands. Right. Um, there are instances, and because it's a large country, there could be thousands of these a day now, where you are in Karachi, I give you 500 rupees worth of airtime, right. and you beam that airtime over to your brother in some village right. in, in the province. And uh, so fine, I mean, you know, it's not the best way of doing things, but the concept is somewhere subliminally, like, it, it's already in there. Right. Uh, but we have to, so, so we are the front runners um, as far as the, as far as getting this out at the grassroots level is concerned. Uh, there are a lot of efforts um, um, at various stages of uh, progress 
amongst banks and telecom providers and so on and so forth. But they're very traditional. Okay. Um, they're very systems integration oriented. They're very product oriented. Everything is very priced. Uh, and we don't work like that. Okay. We really start from the other end. So we feel we have sorted out the consumer experience. Right. We have yet to sort out the agent experience, right. which is really what we need to do next. Uh, but however, we have been very busy um, um, working with the banking sector and the, the uh, telecom sector, uh, where it takes a lot of time um, because uh, the sales cycles, the product cycles are very, very long. What about the people who have worked on the Amana product with you, your colleagues? Has it been easy or difficult to convey this concept to them and this five-year period? Has that been tough on them or are they as persistent as you are that this is going to work and we have to have that staying power in order to make it happen in this country? The, uh, one of the most rewarding things for me um, in uh, for me with Amana is that um, I'm not the only entrepreneur and over time I mean really um, most if not all of our team members have had to make some very critical decisions um, that have really helped Amana and they were purely entrepreneurial it's just not easy um, I mean, startups in this country are not cool, and entrepreneurs are not heroes. Right. And it's a pure labor of love across the floor, and it, that is truly rewarding. And I think it, nothing short of that gets stuff done. Um, and actually, you could, if you had a lot of money to throw at this, you um, actually wouldn't be able to get out the kind of passion and entrepreneurial energy that you would otherwise. And that's where you find uh, the true stars and the true players that actually will help you more than you yourself will take your course forward. And that I feel is one accomplishment of ours is whether people have, um, you know, whether they are in the team right now, they have been in the team in the past, or they have just somehow been loosely attached to Amana for one reason or the other. Um, it is, uh, it, it just uh, works on a very, very personal level for every person involved. Right. So. And also I noticed that NGOs have been now starting to sort of link up with you. They sort of see some sort of uh, synergy between what you're doing and what they're doing. Uh, for example, T2F has linked up with Amana. Sure. Uh, my own women's virtual network is, is trying sure. to get there. So, I mean, why, why do you think that's happening? Is it because we're all sort of startups in a totally different space and we feel that linking up together will achieve something? Or are we just mad? <laughs> well, all things are one. <laughs> all things are connected. Right. I think at some level we share our pains. Right. And... Um, uh, see, we are a sort of a microcosmos in this world of madness where uh, we are on to our own goals and hopefully we all have very, very good intentions. And what we've hopefully achieved, um, some of us, is we've really figured out how important it is to help others right. in their causes so that they in turn may be able to help you in your cause. Um, and the likes of T2F or whoever else. Uh, you know, we have done whatever we can to do that. And it's, it's really, I mean, um, fine. Um, it, it is important to make a lot of money to be able to get beyond a certain critical mass in our line of work. But really, we feel what has to precede that is uh, some social change. I mean, some people think that Amana is going to help democracy in this country. <laughs> so, I mean, that's a bit too far-fetched, okay? But the thing is well, that... Well, it might in terms of how uh, transactions take place. I mean, democracy is not just political, right? It's not just political. It's just more transparency, more trust, okay. uh, more efficiency. 
And uh, we just feel that, you know, the more people love us and the more people use us, um, we'll do just fine. Right. And uh, the likes of um, uh, what, you, what you call NGOs are actually, uh, you know, like some of the people that we enjoy working with the most. And may I extend that actually also to more commercial terms? Um, we find it much more pleasurable to work with some um, banks, or let's say bankers in specific, at very small banks. Right. Uh, because they're very switched on, they know what they're talking about, they are not necessarily bankers either, but they're in the banking system. Right. Uh, but because they come with a different, larger view of the world, they've been in, 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 in other industries, they have a better feel you know, like for what's on the ground. Um, I mean, we get a much bigger kick out of that than with a very large bank uh, that we're working with where there's just a lot more grunt work involved and they, we, there's just a lot more ex explaining to do. And there's, there's vast divisions um, between them, you know, like governments. Right, these, they these, are. <laughs> these, <laughs> these large banks. <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, it uh, starts small and that's why we believe uh, small is beautiful. We've actually come to learn that. It's, you know, just be small and be extremely focused and do really well what you're doing. Great. Now, uh, tell me, uh, for the last two years, I've been watching you at this mobile commerce event, uh, uh, which is, you know, has a great turnout. Um, the way that you use um, SMS to register people, to bring in questions and stuff like that, that's new uh, to conferences in Pakistan. What has what has people's reaction been? And do you think it works? Because to me as an outsider, it looks as if it's working great. You know, people are sending you questions and uh, people are registering and obviously the organizers are very happy with you. So what, what's your take on this? Has it worked? Is it going to catch on? Well, it's, it always works um, in, in, in the sense that if nothing else, you've, you've at least shown people something that could be. Uh, it actually, in my sort of personal opinion, um, it, 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 it's worked really well for me. It's actually uh, a very good validation of our idea is that if it's easy to use, people will use it. So we, we have these terminals right. where you can check in starting with just your phone number and they're easy to use. People really use them. Right. And... Um, in my fireside chat yesterday, for example, um, I got so many questions live. I noticed. <laughs> I spent half my time just taking those questions. And I was so happy because this is absolutely the first time that these people, and I'm talking about bankers, right? Uh, bankers in Pakistan, uh, do that. And some real good questions. And uh, so I'm happy about that. I mean, it's almost surprising that, I mean, these things are not commonplace. Yes. But if you give people something that makes sense, I think people will use it. Yeah, instead of raising your hands and saying, okay, get a mic to me, they're sending you the question. Well, that's actually fine Streamlines too. Streamlines everything. No, but that's fine too. But as part of these conferences, unfortunately, they actually don't leave time for Q&A. No. They don't. That's one of the larger gripes that I heard is like, well, why can't we ask questions? Right. People are making these presentations. Um, so we actually also see our, our work with the organizers also involves uh, uh, closed loop marketing, which we just throw in for free as part of our sponsorship. It, you know, this is the way it's supposed to be done. Right. This is the way you communicate via email, you bring them onto a, you know, a web experience, you get them to check in, you get them to interact via SMS, you follow up with them, right. and then you it's ask them to come back again. It's a total marketing solution, really. And you think that would have happened the world over by now, but it hasn't happened yet. Um, because I was at Palm, and this is what I used to do at Palm, plus wow. other things. Um, so yeah, um, actually, so we do use our work for other Yes. things as well, not just payments. And you think this will expand into other services once the Amana pure model that you're working on takes off, that you will think of doing other things similar to this? Well, it's actually already happened. Oh, it uh, has. Some of the earlier business that we're actually uh, attracting involved just people using our platform for very highly trusted and reliable um, closed loop um, uh, broadcasts and such with their own audiences. 
okay. uh, um, highly specialized. And uh, so, I mean, this is sort of something that we just um, uh, enjoy doing, but it's becoming a line of business as well. So, okay. and it's fun. Yeah. Now, tell me, you also interact with kids at various universities. I've seen you at LUMS, for sure. instance. Um, do they understand what you're trying to do? Do they understand the value of social businesses that will be commercial as well? Yes, and fortunately for us, I mean, more than half of this country is under the age of 30. Right. I think even now. And uh, half of this country um, on any given day is hoping for a better tomorrow. Uh, they're on the internet, you know, they're in touch with the world much more than, let's say, I was 10, 15 years ago. Uh, they know what's happening out there. Um, and even within Pakistan, you've already seen sea changes. You will see more sea changes in the way we, you know, sort of live as part of the larger world. And, and it is also the same, um, let's just call them young people or whatever have you. Um, they understand how difficult it is to get anything done right. So they have a lot of patience. So our beta users are our best friends. Great. They have so much patience. Sure. They've been on our beta platform for two years and they're just waiting patiently for Amana to start commercializing these things. And they love us and they keep on asking us. And uh, more often than not, I actually just randomly run into people at places like Lums. Uh, where they said, oh, I, I, wow, you know, you guys, you know, where are you? <laughs> I'm still waiting for this. They're more concerned about your business than so you are. So what right? we have achieved is over time I've realized that the Amana brand has penetrated, um, you know, um, and people know about Amana at a certain level. And these are the people actually who are going to grow with Amana. So now when all of these young people are, you know, dads someday and then all of their children are on Amana too. So, I mean, it's, you know, it's a journey of a lifetime, really. It's already started for us like that. Terrific. <laughs> well, well, we'll keep an eye on you and we'll have you back. Thank uh, you. Thank you so much for sparing the time during your visit here. It was great fun. It will be uh, wonderful to chat with you again. And maybe we can come and talk to some of your people working in Amana in Lahore. We'd love to do that. Okay. Thank you, John, Thank for you, everything. Cheers. That was Fahad Bangash, CEO of Amana. We, were, we heard from him what he's been doing, what Amana has been up to, and what they look forward to doing in the years ahead. Join me again on another episode of In the Line of Wire. This is Jahara signing off.